The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to this service of Holy Communion according to the Book of Common Prayer. You are indeed most welcome wherever you are watching. This is a service in traditional language being recorded at St. James's Church in Durris. And in the peace and stillness of this beautiful holy place, we pray and break bread together as God's people. Remembering the ongoing circumstances and situation in the world outside, we pray for peace, for tranquility, and that we will all, as one nation, cooperate in trying to assist the government in whatever way we can so that we may one day be free from the coronavirus. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. The Collect of the 16th Sunday after Trinity, let us pray. O Lord, we beseech thee, let thy continual pity cleanse and defend thy church. And because it cannot continue in safety without thy succour, preserve it evermore by thy help and goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Here beginneth the 23rd verse of the 21st chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. And when Jesus was come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, By what authority doest thou these things, and who gave thee this authority? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing, which if ye tell me, I in likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, whence was it? From heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, Why did ye not then believe him? But if we shall say of men, we fear the people. For all hold John as a prophet. And they answering Jesus said, We cannot tell. And he said unto them, Neither I tell you by what authority I do these things. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second and said, Likewise, and he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father? They say unto him, The first. Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and harlots believed him, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward, that ye might believe him. Thanks be to thee, O Lord. There are certain times, I think it's true to say for all of us, is it not, where we think of certain people. And in the morning collect, I often think of a friend, long-standing friend from many years ago, and his joke. And his joke was this, he used to say, who wrote peace and liked to fly at supersonic speeds? 
And of course everybody said, as one does, I don't know. And he said, God. And then he quoted one of the morning colleagues in traditional language, O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord. Great joke, and it's a very clever joke, because of course he is a very clever person. Today in our gospel, the word authority is used by whose authority? The scribes, the Pharisees, the chief priests are questioning the authority of Jesus and he in turn is reflecting back to them because of course we know that Jesus is talking about the authority of our Heavenly Father. The authority of the chief priests and scribes was more to do with power. It was more to do with commanding the people and being set over them. Whereas we know from our Heavenly Father his authority is in the original thinking of it derived by thought, logos, word issuing forth, love, tenderness. In other words, is it a creative authority as in the word author coming from those original meanings. In other words, it's nothing to do with power and subjugation but rather it flows from loving authority and strength. And so Jesus is trying to demonstrate to the chief priests and to the Pharisees that in fact their authority is meaningless because all authority comes from God. In that particular context, of course, we know that the chief priests and scribes and Pharisees lorded it over the people using their power as a means of telling the people what to do. But of course, as we understand it, it was utterly meaningless. They were terrorized and demonized the ordinary people by the rulers. And so Jesus was bringing in a new authority which was turning the world upside down. An authority based on love and care and creation but also based on us, the created beings, understanding that what flows from it all is our need for forgiveness and our repentance. In our modern world, when we think of authority, sometimes it can feel a little bit like the bullying, angry voices of those who tell us what to do and do the opposite thing themselves. The world is in quite a quandary, is it not? All the different shouting voices of politicians. The quiet, calm voices of medical professionals are the ones we need to hear, and the experts. Constitutional rights about whether or not to wear masks will not save lives, but only frighten people. It's been a joy in our own parish here to know that our schools are both back functioning safely and that the children are well and safe and happy. And surely that is what we wish, not only for the children, but for ourselves. It has been a very difficult time. It looks like it's going to be even more challenging. But in all of it, in all of our prayers, as we ponder these things, our need for forgiveness, our need to repent, our need for love, the love of God which strengthens and sustains us, enables us as individuals to walk in the path of Christ, but also to be strong for each other, to be a support. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. 
We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests and deacons that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and holy word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, <coughs> truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants, departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. <coughs> Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that travail and are heavy laden and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul said, this is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your heart. We lift them unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. 
Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and in its statutes and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, According to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Draw near in faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee, for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood, of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit, we all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Thank you for joining in this service of Holy Communion. 
as you go out into the world, we pray that you will be strengthened by God's grace and his love, and that all things belonging to the Spirit will dwell in you. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always.